Hope everybody had a good Thanksgiving weekend. I know we're excited to be back. We got our guys back in here on Saturday and um, started going over some things, getting a prep for Florida, just continuing there. Um, you know, when you look at Florida, I think right now they're playing as good as any team in the country offensively. Um, been very efficient, especially at quarterback position. Uh, Kyle Trask has done a phenomenal job uh, getting the ball to the right uh, playmakers. Uh, knows where to go with the ball. You know, we're familiar with him. We played him last year. He played really well against us. Uh, I think they've got probably the best tight end in the country. And uh, Kyle Pitts, um, you know, just he's – nobody's really been able to slow him down. Uh, the thing that has really impressed me the most about him, uh, just in his game, everybody knew that he was a, a, a very good receiving tight end. But I think if you just look at – this season, he's done a tremendous job blocking in the C area um, that has really elevated his game. Um, nobody really talks about that, but I, I see it. I see the way he's playing. Um, got really good running backs. Got a bunch of uh, wide receivers. Got experience on the D-line. You know, Todd Grantham um, has always uh, been a guy that creates negative plays, gives you a lot of different looks. Uh, have been very opportunistic uh, on that side of the ball. Uh, and then special teams got really good specialists, uh, good returners. Uh, so it'll be a huge challenge for us. Uh, and, I, and our guys, we're excited about playing this game. We uh, obviously uh, didn't get a chance to play last week. Um, you know, we've not had any new um, COVID positives uh, from, from our last testing. Uh, we do have some guys that are in quarantine um, that won't be able to practice this week, uh, but will be – um, able to play on game day. So uh, it's an unusual circumstance that we're working through it. And uh, uh, the next guys are getting ready to play. So uh, we've got a full week this week, and uh, we're excited about playing Florida. Uh, yeah, Jeremy, I wanted to ask you, last month Nick Saban was, was talking about <laughs> he went. He had talked to ESPN and said it used to be that good defense beats good offense, and he said good do, good defense doesn't beat good offense anymore. He talked about the Georgia game some, and said that that's not the way it used to be. Um, but he said it's not that way anymore. I wanted to get your take on that and, and what you thought about that and and how that sort of has informed your own program. Well, I think um, you know there's more points being scored now than ever, uh, especially in this league. Uh, there's always been. This has traditionally been kind of a defensive dominated league, but over the last probably three or four years, uh, you, you can see that it's changing a little bit. Um, and there's, there's been days that uh, some of the best teams who had the best defenses, their offense have to, they, they have to cover for them. You know, you got to win a game, you know, 42 to 38 or uh, 46 to 41 or something, you know, so uh, you've got to be able to score points. I think especially when you look at this season uh, with a 10-game SEC schedule and the grind of it, the teams that have been really explosive on offense probably have created an advantage for them um, just because the games have probably not been as physical. You know, if you, if you score a lot of points and the other team's trying to catch up, there's not as much ground and pound. And um, so I, I think you've definitely seen that. When you look at your own sort of offense, what, what do you feel like has limited you guys from having some of that explosiveness and being able to score 40 points and those kind of things? Well, I can assure you we want to score every every possession, right? Uh, I mean, we've talked about this over and over. We've had turnovers. We've had penalties, lack of execution. Um, you know, it's, I, I can assure you, David, it's not our plan to go out there and score 17 points. Uh, we want to score as many as we can, right? Thanks. Jeremy, when you look at opposing offenses, and I don't know how many scripted plays Florida will have out of the gate, 10, 12, whatever it may be, but I did see where out of their eight games, they've scored six touchdowns and a field goal on their opening possessions. So how tough will it be early out of the gate to make sure this offense can get control? Well, I think, I think uh, Dan has always done a really good job as a play caller. Uh, based off the personnel that he that he has on his team, uh, you know, uh, you look at them right now. You know, they're they're efficient running the football. They're efficient throwing the football. They get the ball to a, a lot of different receivers. Uh, 
a lot of a lot of different running backs. Um, so he's he's always done a fantastic job mixing it up. You know, um, probably now they're throwing it more than they ever have. Uh, it's based off his team, right? He's he's got a a really good quarterback with a good surrounding cast. Uh, it's not to say that they couldn't go run the ball uh, a whole bunch of times and win the same amount of games. I think they're they're excellent running the football, but he's just playing to his strengths. I think I think he's always done a really good job. So it's not just um, the opening drive; it's the entire game. You've got obviously a defensive background. How much guessing is there when it comes to that opening drive? When it, when a when a team comes in with a few plays scripted, how how much guessing do you do from a defensive standpoint along those lines? Well, you know, if you it, it, it's it's you start with the the opening drive, uh, start with third downs, uh, short yardage, goal line, red area, coming out, uh, two minute. There's all these different uh, situations uh, during the game that you you kind of got to go back and dig up history and see what they've done in the past. Uh, you know, but they're always going to have change ups, and sometimes when you've coached against guys as long as we've coached against each other, uh, there might be too much history. So obviously what they're doing right now is not what he did when he was at Mississippi State. Um, so you really have to go over what they've done right now. But you can see he, he pulls out things that he's done over the last 10 or 12 years, and it'll show up in a game, you know. So you really got to be ready for everything. Thank you. Jeremy, uh, you've talked a lot about it practice habits and execution as things that you guys uh, need to get better at to improve and get the results. What are some other things that you guys have worked on with these extra practices or even changed to maybe help you get results besides the, those things that are obviously important also? Well, we've had three off weeks, I think, in the last five weeks. So it's been an opportunity for a lot of younger guys to take a lot of reps. Um, so the more you do something, the better you get at it. Um, and then for a lot of the older guys, you know, we had a lot of guys that have been in and out of the lineup. And, and one thing about um, any sport or anything you want to do, you want to kind of get in a, in, in a routine. Uh, so being able to kind of get in a routine and practice um, and create some consistency within a group uh, has been important. You know, uh, this past week was a little different uh, than the previous off weeks because we had a lot of guys that were out of practice. So, um, you know, we, we didn't have the volume uh, of workload like we've done in the previous week. So a little more walkthroughs, a lot more teaching uh, just to, to be able to be productive. Any, any number in terms of people that have been out that weren't available to you this week? Um, you know, we, we've had two uh, guys test positive, but it dates back to when we came back from Auburn. Uh, but unfortunately, with the contact tracing, you know, that number has grown, uh, you know, pretty good bit there. So um, it, it's it's knocked us out of a lot of the guys, uh, which they'll start coming back in here toward the end of this week. Yeah, I guess I just meant the number of guys that were out due to contact tracing. It's nothing like it was earlier in the year or anything, right? No, we're, we're you know, at that time we were 40 and 50. We're, we're probably about 16 right now. Jeremy, with, with those uh, quarantining players, how, how does that work? Because uh, if I understand correctly, the, the SEC rules a 14-day quarantine for those guys, and after the positive tests would have been on Sunday after the, the Auburn game. So, so how does that timeline work for, for them to be back in, in time to play for this game? Well, it's right there on the there's there's multiple tests, obviously. So we, we do a test on Sunday, uh, Tuesday and Thursday. Um, so when it comes back in, uh, the docs look at it and, and they go through, um, I guess, our local health department with the exact quarantine uh, when people are in, when people are out. So um, that that's where they get. That's what we go by. So the, the only guys out for, for this weekend and for, for COVID reasons, would that just be the two guys that tested positive? Um, and, and a couple of more right now. Okay. We'll go to Jimmy. Jimmy, you were talking about Kyle Trask. 
How is he better this year than he was last year? Well, he's got more experience. Um, you know, it, he's uh, really done a nice job getting the balls to the playmakers. Uh, is is made a lot of really good decisions. Has not made a lot of poor decisions. He he uh, has enough athletic ability to extend plays. Um, you know, so I, I think he's played really really well. And you mentioned sixteen of them that that may be in quarantine or so forth. Are all of your quarterbacks available, or is or has any of your quarterbacks been affected by that? No, we we we've had uh, we've had one that's been affected. So uh, listen, I, the the whole part of it is I've tried to, you know, uh, be as transparent as we can with it. We can't say exactly who, but um, you know, these guys uh, that are out there practicing, they're they're working hard uh, to create chemistry with our guys. So um, we'll continue to do that this week. Okay. And you practice Saturday, Sunday, right? Only practice don't only had a, a walk through on Saturday. Didn't practice on Sunday. Okay. Are, are you giving quarterbacks equal reps, or did you do that on Saturday? Well, it was a walk through, Jimmy. So uh, we're, we're we'll we'll see as we go through the week. Okay. We'll go to Jordan and then Gustavo. Jeremy, when you are looking at playing or starting a true freshman, aside from just kind of the basic knowledge of the position and what's being asked of them, what are some of the intangibles that you look for from them in practice? Well, um, you know, it starts probably with knowledge, um, you know, and for this freshman class, um, you know, with, with the we had some guys that were mid-year, but they didn't get a chance to go through spring ball, so that probably hurt them. Um, but just creating the right habits, uh, knowledge, knowing what you're supposed to do, how you're supposed to do it, and why you're supposed to do it that way uh, is important. Uh, being able to be mature enough to come and work every day at practice to compete, um, you know, and because – everybody sees it right so and hey our freshman our freshman class we got a lot of really good football players in there um and these guys continued to be positive to work hard and as the season has went you've seen more and more of them play Gustavo coach Tennessee has not played at home in six weeks how excited you are to go back and play at Newland Stadium against a tough and a rival opponent as Florida yeah I'm we're absolutely looking forward to it. Uh, you know, it seems like it's been forever since we've had a home game. Uh, you know, so we'll be excited to be back in England. I, I think, uh, obviously, it's a huge advantage for us to play at home. Uh, our crowd has been great this year in every game, so we'll need them to be that way again Saturday. We'll go to Madison, then back to Vince. <laughs> Hey, Coach, you talk about the grind of playing a conference only season. I know it's nothing new now late in the season, but I just wanted to ask how you are doing, how your staff's doing, and how the players are doing just adjusting to weeks where you're preparing mentally and physically to play on Saturday, and then it's postponed and it's out of your control. Just how have the players responded both mentally and um, on the field as well? Well, um, you know, it's it's – late in the year now so we've, we've kind of gotten used to it you know it's obviously starting on March the 12th uh, for our players uh, and everybody in our program you know everything changed you know so we've been working hard to adapt and um, I feel like our staff's done an outstanding job uh, continuing to do that you know one thing that um, that I'm proud of uh, is is Dr. Klink and um, Geronimo and those guys in the athletic, um, um, the medical staff have done a phenomenal job really kind of protecting our guys and protecting everybody in our organization. So uh, they, we, our, and our kids have responded to it. So that, that's been a huge deal for us. Jimmy, I know Kyle Pitts presents maybe different challenges that no other tight end does, but how would you assess how your defense has defended tight ends this year? Well, it doesn't matter how we've defended them. None of them have been like this guy, right? So, uh, you know, this is probably in all my years coaching, I believe he's the most talented guy that we've ever played against. Uh, 
you know, he's a guy that can line up and, and win one-on-one on corners. He can win one-on-one on safeties, uh, linebackers. Uh, so, and then, like I said, he's really improved, uh, and, and blocking uh, in the interior part. You know, he's just a complete football player uh, and, and playing as good as anybody in our conference. We'll go to Mike Wilson and Matt Ray. Yeah, Jeremy, with, with Harrison Bailey, how much more have you been able to, to throw at him with the playbook and, and understanding the offense as the season has moved along? Well, I, don't, I really don't think the issue of, of – you know, is the playbook. Uh, you know, Harrison's a smart guy that's worked really hard. It's it's been more about opportunities. Uh, you know, so and getting live opportunities, and he's had a chance to do more and more of that as the season has went. Uh, when you just talk about the volume of work, you know, really uh, playing a little bit at the end of the Kentucky game, the Arkansas game, and then this um, couple of weeks ago against Auburn has been really good for him, just for the speed of the game. Uh, to prepare him uh, for the future. So uh, that's been really, really good. Uh, he works hard every single day um, and, and is developing uh, a little bit more of a leadership around the rest of his teammates. That's part of being a quarterback is getting the other 10 guys to be at their best. So, uh, again, he continues to do what we ask him to do. Then when do you expect to have the quarterback who's affected by – contact tracing back available to practice and would it be hard to to play a quarterback who hasn't practiced in up to two weeks well it'd be hard to play anybody right um so you know Jalen McCullough did it a little bit against South Carolina he played a couple of plays in that game um Warren Burrell did it also this year so uh it's not idea but the one thing about it when you're in contact tracing you can you can still work out. You can still stay in shape. You can do the things. It's just got to be in a confined environment. Uh, so, you know, they, they get a chance to watch the meetings via Zoom so they can look at the game plan. It's just not actually experiencing the reps out there. Matt. Uh, Jeremy, you've talked about how great Kyle Pitts is and the supporting cast around him with Kadarius Tony, Jacob Copeland, and so on. But – you just mentioned it with Jalen McCullough and Warren Burrell. Your secondary has been hit by injury and absences dating back to, you know, week one. Do you expect to finally have that group healthy and at full strength on Saturday, or are you still going to be down some guys? You know, it'll be um, – we, we, we've got guys that have really pushed through the entire year. Uh, it's just been an unusual year, and, and some of it has probably been from the, st- the, the, the start and stop. Um, has affected uh, some individuals a little bit more. So, uh, you know, ever who we got Saturday, they'll go out there and they'll they'll uh, play to the best of their ability and and uh, they'll play together. Back to Jimmy Himes. Hey, Jeremy. During these weeks, you've had to practice uh, without a game on a Saturday. Where do you feel like you've improved as a team? Say it again. Where do you feel like you have improved with these additional practices you've had without a game on Saturday? Where do you feel like you may have gotten better? Well, creating depth. You know, like I said, we, we had a lot, of, a lot of young guys that were affected all the way back in fall camp. Uh, it's when we started the scrimmages on Sunday nights. Um, and when we've had these off weeks, we've treated them like fall camps, really up until this past week. Uh, so it's really – it's been good for a lot of young players. Uh, and – to, to create depth on our team, and, and we're going to need it down the stretch. Also, with Brent Samaglia, he's uh, been a bit inconsistent. Is he fully healthy now? I think he was experiencing maybe a groin injury, but is he fully healthy at this point? Well, he he he's he's working to get there. I don't know, Jimmy, that he is. Uh, you know, he's he came back from um, I guess when we got here in June uh, with a little bit of an injury there, and he's he's kind of worked in worked his way through it throughout the season uh so but again he's a guy that uh we believe in uh guy you know he's he's been almost automatic since we've been here uh so when he's healthy he's one of the best players in the country at that position last question gustavo coach there's he's going to face two teams that are fighting to be on the college football playoff how challenged is going to be you know, Tennessee being this team, they're going to face two big teams. They're fighting to be on the college football playoffs. Um, talking about Florida? 
and Texas A&M as well. Okay, we're, 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 yeah, we're focused on Florida right now, uh, and that's enough to focus on. So, listen, um, they got a really good football team. They're very well coached. Uh, you know, and like I said, they'll, they'll present a lot of different challenges for us, uh, and, it, and it's a great opportunity. It's a great opportunity for everybody in our program, uh, and it's something that we're looking forward to. All right, thank you all. Thanks, Jeremy. Thanks, Bill. Thank you.